Hey girl, hey. So I just really wanted to do kind of part of my back to school series, um, a video all about supplies and organization. And I get this requested a lot. I mean, a lot of people do when it comes to back to school. Um, it's really nice to get kind of different points of view of different people of how they organize and their school supplies and everything because everyone's different in that way. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of share with you guys um, all of my school supplies and how I organize them. And this is not a school supplies haul. These are kind of school supplies I had from last year. I don't start school for over a month, so um, I didn't buy any new school supplies. But this is just what I did last year and what's always worked for me. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I know a lot of you going back to school soon. Yay! <laughs> Can't wait, right? So first of all, I'm going to start with just a plain loose folder. This is just a really easy folder. It's a peachy folder. I really like the color. This is from Staples. It's like a really cool material. It's just like plastic so it doesn't rip because a lot of PG folders are that like stiff paper cardboard thing. Um, but And they always rip and just get messed up. But these ones are really not very... Um, fragile I guess. I mean the edges where the holes are ripped but I don't really use them for the holes. Like I don't use them in a binder or anything so it works for me. I just keep one of these single binders or PG folders like this um, just loose in my bag, backpack, bag, whatever you take. I use a tote bag. Um, but I just have this always no matter what binders I have because I always find myself needing just a place to stick random papers that need to go home or something if there's like a permission slip. Something that just need doesn't have a real place to belong but just like a single paper or something I just stick it in here and I always have it in my bag so I need to access it at home or at school um it's just always in good reach and it's really easy and um it's just it prevents having that clutter of just random papers that you don't know what the heck to do with um it just gives them a home everyone deserves a place to belong even loose random papers. I should have talked about this first but now I'm going to and that is one of the most important tools for organization and that would be your planner and this is an agenda from Lily Pulitzer. Um, I got this on Glitzy Glam and it's a really nice agenda. It's like over a year. It's like August 2011 through to December 2012. So 17 month agenda and it's really cute and this is like the kind of thing that makes you want to be organized because it's so cute. It's like a smaller size. I think this is called the pocket size one but I don't know anyone who could fit this in their pocket. You can go through, there's a month calendar first and then there's daily calendars. So this is August 2011 and I don't have school in August so there's nothing in here but I'll take you to September when I started school and I definitely use this more in the beginning of the year. Um, but what's good for this is you write down what homework is due on the date that it's due so you can keep track of due dates too and um, just know what you have to do. On September Friday, September 23rd, 2011, I had chem reading number two due and that was pages 46 to 52 and I had to do problems two through six. So I just wrote them on here. It was due this day so I knew when I had to do them and I did them and then that's it. I don't really check them off or anything. You can if you want to, but it's just so nice when you see right then and there, okay, for this next week, I have to do this stuff. And you won't forget your homework and stuff like that. It's just so much more convenient. I also did to organize my school, which worked for me, um, is I'm a real list person. And on the iPhone, there's an app called, um, I think it's Reminders or something like that. And it's just like a to-do list form where you just check them off. So I would write down my homework and in the notes section of that, I would write the due date. And then I could just press the check mark button when I was done and then it would disappear. So I had a list right in front of me of what I had to do and the due dates were in like the notes of it. So that worked too. But um, this is definitely also a really good option. And you might not always be able to use your phone in classes and stuff. I mean, even if you didn't, I still did. But okay, and now I'm going to talk about my pencil pouch. This is my pencil pouch. It's really simple. It's like this uh, neoprene kind of squishy little case and it's from Staples and it's just this basic blue color. And I like it because it's stretchy, so you can like jam it packed full, but it's small, it's compact, so it doesn't take that much room, but you can fit a lot in here. So it's a zip. <laughs> and I'm gonna go through everything that's in here. I definitely overstuffed this thing, but that's because you lose like all your utensils throughout the year. And it's just so nice to have more than you need, like rather than not enough. Black pearl erasers. I call this a ninja eraser because it's black. Um, not to be racist, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, moving on. Two highlighters because sometimes it's nice to highlight in different colors if it's for different things. Pink one and a yellow one, nice and bright. I have a Sharpie. You never know when you're gonna need a Sharpie or someone else is going to need a Sharpie. You'll be glad you have it. Uh, I have pencil lead. I use mechanical pencils more than I use regular pencils. So I definitely also always have pencil lead on me. Um, 
0.7 for sure. And then I do have two regular pencils because you never know. They're the ninja pencils that go along with the ninja eraser because they're black. They're called Mirado Black Warrior. So definitely ninja. Mechanical pencil. I usually have more than this. I have three pens. They're all black. You could do different colors if you want. This one is like one of these Twilight pens that retract. This one is like an RSVP pen where it just like has the cap. And then this one is a Paper Mate, just really basic pen that comes in like a pack of five million. And that's everything that's in this pencil pouch, but that's all you ever really need. Um, in my opinion, that's all I ever really needed. Next, we will dive into the lovely art of the binder. Now, this is my Honors US History binder. And um, personally, I had, for my school, most teachers recommend or require you to have a binder dedicated solely to their class. If they don't, if you don't have to and you prefer to combine classes, that's totally cool. You could even get like a bigger one. I just use one inch binders for every single one of my classes. They have a separate one. Um, and I got them all with different colors so I could easily differentiate them. And I don't, I mean, this is just a thing about me, but I don't like to put things on the front of them anymore. I used to do that, but I just think it looks kind of annoying when I have like a giant paper in it that has a name and stuff and on the side. I just, it's so much easier because it's not that hard to remember what color, like, this was totally my Spanish binder. Um, was it? Oh gosh, yes it was. Okay, I was right. Oh, it's been a while, it's been a while. Yeah, um, it's just really easy for me that way is to get a different color binder for each class. And then I would put them, okay, I'm totally OCD about this stuff. But in my locker, I had one of those locker shelves. I don't know, it's up there. Um, I'll go get it, why not? And you fold it out like this, you can collapse it. It's really nice, portable. And um, my lockers were, it was nice because you were able to do this. You might not have the room in every locker, but in my school locker you could. So I had a locker shelf sitting in my locker like this. And I had my binder sitting on top of it. And the space underneath it was for anything else that it might need to be in my locker. Like I had yoga class, so if I needed to put my yoga clothes, um, take them home or something, I'd stash them in here. If you bring a lunch to school, stash them here. Just anything else, like extra school supplies, you never know. Um, I'd put it underneath. And then on top of it, I would have all my binders. So I'll show you. At my school, we have block scheduling. So we have um, seven classes total. We have three classes one day, four classes the other, and it alternates. So what I would do is I would have my binders staggered like this on top of them. So like one for one day would be facing this way and the ones for the other day would be facing the opposite direction. So that, and they'd be order of which classes first. It worked for me and I always knew which was in its place and the colors made it easy too. So um, it was perfectly fine and I would have them stacked on top like this and I never had any problems with a messy locker from that and I definitely recommend doing that and have textbooks um, just leaning against the side because I didn't take up all the room. So get a locker shelf for sure. That's one of my recommendations. So I would always have the syllabus first in the binder. I really don't know why um, that was so important to me. I'm not going to show it because it says like the teacher in the school. For Honors US History, it was like a college prep class. So what he'd do is he'd give us a note sheet with an overview and bullet points of what we were going over for the day. So I'd put that in the front like this. I put that in the front and that's the note sheet. And then behind it, I would have all of my notes for that section of the note sheet and the date would be up here and the title of the note sheet would be right here. And I have my notes right behind it. And then I did that for every note sheet so I could keep track of which notes go where and for what and everything like that. And I had them in chronological order um, of when we took them and stuff. And it was just really easy to keep track of that. And then I had, um, I actually ran out of paper at the end of the year, but I had all my loose leaf paper in the back um, like that. That's just how I did it. When you, when you have a lot of notes to take, I think it's easier to do it that way or even reverse chronological order so you open up, I can't even say it, um, so you open up to the page that you're on. Um, that's what I did in my chemistry binder, which I don't have intact anymore. Some of my best friends in honors US history class were these lovely index cards. These are cool, they have like one color on each side and they have like a bunch of colors in it. So um, they're lined on one side, plain on the other. And what I would do is after we finish a unit, we would take a test on it, like on every unit, you know. So what I would do is I would take all the note sheets from that unit. Sometimes he only gave us a study guide like twice. Um, so I could go off that or I could just go on my own what I thought was most important and what I thought would be on the test. And I, I made these lovely note cards, flash cards. Flash cards are the best way for me to study. Everyone's different, like I said, but flash cards worked awesome for me. So I definitely recommend that um, if you want to try it out. But like what I would do is I take a note card 
and I'd rip it in half so they're like this so I could save them and I didn't need that much space. And then on the plain side, I'd write the name of it. So this one's New Frontier. And on the other side, I'd write the details of it. And this one says JFK plus LBJ, more higher quality of life for America. And then the star, which is the significance, says that will fight communism in itself. So yeah, and then I would flash them to myself with friends, you know, whatever. And what's really nice about these is, and they helped me so much on the test, like so much. And then by the end of the semester, when I had every unit done and we were studying for the final, I had all my flashcards from every unit saved and I would just go through them to study for the final. And that's all I had to do because I had all the important information um, all done. And then after the test, if there was something important that I missed in my flashcards, I would go ahead and add them to the pile so that when I studied for the final, it would be in there. That's how I studied and it worked really well for me. So if you have a class like that, that has a lot of notes and a lot of like just information, then you definitely should try flashcards and notes for it. So that's how I did it. And they're all organized in my binder like this. I definitely already emptied out my math binder, which I'm kind of regretting now. Um, but just to kind of go over it, I guess I'll put it in here. What I would do for math is these. These are so awesome. Like I said earlier, if you want to combine different subjects into one binder, then you can use dividers like this to divide each class. Um, that'd be really nice. I mean, if you have block scheduling like me and you don't need that much room in your binders, you could just have one binder for each day and then block off the classes that you need. Um, but what's really nice with these dividers, these are lifesavers for math at least. In my math class, um, my teacher kind of guided us for Algebra 2, but then in Trig last year slash Recalc, she kind of let us do whatever. So I just used the same method that she gave us the first year. Um, but what we did is we would have to block off each unit with one of these. Oh look, I'm orange. I'm blue, I'm a deer, I'm a deer. If I was green, I would die. Sorry, distraction. We'd block off each unit with one of these and we would say the unit thing on the title, on the tab. I don't know why I said that. And just what unit it was. And then I would have every notes that we took from that unit. And then I'd have the home, the, no, I have the test first, then the notes, then the homework, and like any extra work we had for it. Um, like that. And then, so that was like how I organized it all. I had it in reverse chronological order, so unit one was in the back. And then on top of that, I would just have the plain loose paper that I would take notes on. And then at the end of the unit, I would organize it all and keep it like that. So it was really easy to flip back to a certain unit. If I was looking for how to do it or just like a reflection of it or something, it was really easy to find. So I would definitely definitely recommend using these um, to block off. I mean, if you have a class that is really like important to differentiate each unit or chapter or whatever, um, definitely these. Or if you just have like in English class we had to use them to block off like work sample, SAT prep, you know, vocab, whatever. Um, and then we use those too. So I just think they're really, really easy organizational tools right there. So yeah, um, this video is almost 20 minutes long. And those are just some of my organizational tips and school supplies that I use mostly um, in school. I hope this helped you. I'm gonna be a senior in high school if you didn't know. So I've kind of been working at this for a while. And this is what has worked for me thus far. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Yay for going back to school. Yeah, school. School is cool.